welcome to my youtube channel bios mind i am bios mind today we are going to know about the bio safety in biotechnology come on let's enter into the video all the microorganisms used in biotechnology are non pathogenic to humans and other animals Biotechnology has made major advances in public health by the control of communicable diseases with vaccines and the improvement in the quality of the environment by the continued improvements in the biological waste treatment processes many microorganisms can infect humans animals and plants and cause disease most microorganisms used by industry are harmless and many are indeed used directly for the production of human or animal foods only a small number of potentially dangerous microorganisms have been used by industry in the manufacture of vaccines or diagnostic reagents for example botella pertussis that is whooping cough and mycobacterium tuberculosis TB and the virus that causes foot and mouth disease stringent containment practices have been the norm in recent years there have been many scientific advances permitting alterations to the genetic makeup of microorganisms recombinant dna techniques have been the most successful but have also been the cause of much concern to the public bio safety is the prevention of large scale loss of biological integrity focusing both on ecology and human health these prevention mechanisms include conduction of regular reviews of the bio safety in laboratory settings as well as strict guidelines to follow bio safety is used to do product from harmful incidents many laboratories handling bio hazards employ an ongoing risk management assessment and enforcement process for bio safety failures to follow such protocols can lead to increased risk of exposure to bio hazards or pathogens human error and poor technique contribute to unnecessary exposure and compromise the best safeguards set into place for protection the term containment is used in describing safe methods for managing infectious materials in the laboratory environment where they are being handled or maintained the purpose of containment is to reduce or eliminate exposure of laboratory workers other persons and the outside environment to potentially hazardous agents primary containment the protection of personal 
and the immediate laboratory environment from exposure to infectious agents is provided by both good microbiological technique and the use of appropriate safety equipment the use of vaccines may provide an increased level of personal protection secondary containment the protection of the environment external to the laboratory from exposure to infectious materials is provided by a combination of facility design and operational practices therefore the three elements of containment include laboratory practice and technique safety equipment and facility design the risk assessment of the work to be done with a specific agent will determine the appropriate combination of these elements that's it for today's topic we will know about the laboratory practice and techniques in the next video if you have any doubts just comment in the comment section if you like this video like share and subscribe to my channel bios mind thanks for watching this video